Sorry, one last person. Okay. Do we have any volunteers or who'd like to be asked some questions first? Anybody? Okay, Trent's up. Yep. All right. Welcome, Trent. So first, we're going to go through the layers of the foot, and we're going to talk about anatomically where everything should be originating. Um, when we talk about the first layer of the foot, you remember what muscles there are in the plantar layer? Are you unmuted? Okay, we have FDB, abductor lucis, abductor digitum minimi. He's trying to unmute his mic here. You can at least narrate while, while we're waiting. Um, what I want you guys to be able to know, oh, okay, jumped ahead. When we draw here, so if we have the flexor digitorum brevis muscle, where do you think, are you unmuted yet? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, you're good now. All right, so between those three muscles, if you think of the calcaneus back here as being split into thirds, which muscle is going to originate on the center? Uh, Sorry, what was that? Which muscle is going to originate where? Which muscle is going to originate on the medial third of the calcaneus? So that'd be the medial third. That's going to be abductor hallucis. Okay, and where is that going to insert? Um, prox, base of the proximal phalanx of the first. Okay, of the hallux, good. And then what's going to be in the middle third of the calcaneus? So it'll be the FDB. And that's going to insert where? It's going to go, that go proximal phalanx of two, three, and four. So an easy way to remember this is... Is it possible for a tendon to insert on the proximal phalanx plantarly? Why would that not be possible? What oh, that's insert the, is yeah, the plantar plate. Good. So and my drawings are tough here, but the plantar plate, plantar yes, plantar. you're correct. So the flexor storm brevis goes all the way out to the intermediate phalanx. Okay. And what it actually does is it's going to have to split a little bit because what tendon is going to run through it and come distally the longest uh good flexors are storm longest last question for you which one is on the lateral side of the calcaneus so the abductor digit minimi and that's going to insert where uh so i take proximal because there's no middle for that one and it's not going to go the distal true and the point of it is to what move the toe on the metatarsal right right so the easiest way of doing that is inserting here okay and so we can see with our netters here you've got everything correct um questions do you want to do another layer do you want to pass it off to somebody else uh i'll do another one but if someone else wants to go there feel free to take Good. it we'll give you one more then someone else can take over all right, so layer two has two muscles and two tendons in it. Do you remember what they are? So muscles are quadratus plantae and the lumbricals. Okay, and the two tendons? Uh, I want to say flexor digitorum longus and... Loose, uh, flexor lucis along it there as well. Good. So you already identified where the flexor digitorum longus inserts. And sorry about the drawing there. Flexor lucis longus inserts where? So it's going to be distal phalanx of the hallux. Okay. What do we call this right here? 
So that's a not a Henry. Good. And then where does the quadratus plantae originate and insert? True. Um, so I know it originates it originate off the FDL. Or That's where it inserts. It inserts yep. on the FDL, okay. And then it originates, is it on the, uh, is, it, is it a chief of one of the muscles? It's going to actually come off the calcaneus. Oh, okay. So this acts as a stabilizer to help pull the FDL axially. When we get this muscle wasting of the abduct or the quadratus plantae, then the FDL, which comes from more medial, ends up drifting a little bit more medial. And we don't have as axial of a pull and you have more of a bleakit of a pull. That's when you see a lot of people with these doctovarus deformities as the foot tries to grip. Gotcha. And then where do all the lumbricals originate? So those are coming off the – are they the adjacent aspects of the, like, the metatarsals that are in between, or is it just the medial, medial side? It's actually off of your FDL here. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on the medial side. Good. So see the muscle bellies coming off the tendon? Right. And they're going to go onto the medial side of your proximal phalanx. Good. And those help stabilize too. Good. All right. Dr. Clarity asked a couple minutes ago, who wants to be next? All right, Andrew. Third layer of the foot. This one, I'll give you the hint, has three muscles, but a total of five muscle bellies. So here... We're going to have flexor hallucis brevis. Okay. Our adductor hallucis. Okay. And our flexor digiti minimi. Okay. Do you want, which one do you want to start with where it originates and inserts? Um, let's do FHB. Okay. So it's going to be like a little bit of cuboid. Okay. A little bit of like the met basis. Sure. And then kind of general area. The yeah, more important gonna, thing for this one is where it inserts. Yeah, so on the sesamoids and then to the proximal phalanx. Good. Why is that important? Why do you think? Um it stabilizes the sesamoids. Good. And we do a lot of first MPJ surgery, right? So yeah, least, for amputations so, and that kind of thing to leave it. Sure. And even if we do like an implant, if we do a calectomy, if we do a bunion, any of these procedures, we if we're too aggressive, we can peel off a lot of that FHB. Or if you do a sesmoidectomy, maybe we do a tibial sesmoidectomy, you really don't want to detach everything. We know that we can, in theory, leave it attached to the proximal phalanx here. So if you do good dissection, you're not going to lose your whole attachment. So that's why it's very important for that to know where it inserts. Okay, that's one muscle belly. So then our adductor. Muscle bellies, okay. This one so, also comes into play with bunion surgery. Yeah, adductor hallucis. So we're going to have our oblique which is going to go down to that cuboid area again in the metatarsal bases. Okay. What about the met heads? So our transverse head for adductor hallucis will be on the met heads. Do you know which ones? Two, three, and four. No, three, so four, you, and five. The, an easy way of remembering this is that if you had a muscle that ins that originated right here, and inserted right there, would that be a useful muscle? Not really. Yeah, that would be very small and tiny. So we know that you have to go a little bit further away. So the transverse head comes off of three, four, and five, and it's going to come across, and then the oblique head is going to come off of the bases of two, three, and four. And where do those insert? On the lateral aspect of the proximal phalanx, 
kind of base. Yeah, it kind of blends in with your fibular sesamoid and to the lateral aspect of the proximal phalanx. And what do we call this, where they actually come together? There's a term for this little tendon here. Conjoined tendon. Good. So that conjoined tendon is actually the two becoming one. So when we release, we do an adductor release, we're not finding two different tendons there. It's just the one tendon we're releasing. Good. And then what's the last one? Last one is our flexor digiti minimi. Okay. And that originates where? I think that's also off the cuboid. Yeah, and fifth nut base there. And where is that going to go to? That's going to go to the proximal phalanx of the fifth. Okay, sometimes it goes a little further if there's an intermediate phalanx here. So we're looking, we can see here's your flexor digiti minimi coming mostly out to the proximal phalanx. Can we see your covered up with my screen here? Here's your adductor and your FHB. So it kind of all blends together here when we talk about your adductor and their conjoint tendon. Good. Do you want to do the fourth layer? Uh, I can pass it off. Anybody else want to do the fourth layer? Okay, looks like you're up again, Andrew. So what's in the fourth layer? Here we have our inner osseous yeah, muscles. Okay. And what do, so, do you, did you learn an acronym for that? Yeah, pads and dabs. Okay. What does that mean? So our plantar interosseous, our adductors, pad, and then our dorsal ones are our abductors, so they're dabs. And how many are in the plantar versus dorsal? So three pads and four dabs. Good. These actually come into play when you see a lot of standardized exams. Maybe you've seen them on boards one, but definitely boards two, surgical boards. And the reason is because we have to know anatomy for complications and for dissection. So when we're referring to these, what is the actual... Are we using the midline of the body or are we using the second ray to name the second them? ray? Good. So if we draw a line down the second ray, these are all coming off of what to originate? The metatarsal shafts. Good. So when we have this going on, which ones are those? Those are the dabs. Okay. And they're going to abduct away from the second ray midline. And then we have these, which are your plantar interosseae. And those are going to adduct them to the midline. Where this comes to play in standardized exams is that they may say you did a, a surgery in the second inner space here. And after surgery, you notice that the patient's second toe starts to deviate medially. What do you think was accidentally cut during the procedure? So what tendon do you think you would have cut? Dab number two. Good. And they'll try to trick you by saying dab dorsal one, two, three, or plantar one, two, three. So just draw those out if you ever need to, but they will come up again um, on standardized exams. Okay, any questions on the plantar layers of the foot? Here's your drawing, or your netters. So if we're gonna go to the dorsal foot, who wants to take over that? I can try it if no one wants to. Okay. So dorsal foot, we don't have as much going on. What's the only muscle on the dorsal foot, muscle belly? Uh, intrinsic muscles would be uh, extensor lucis brevis and extensor digital brevis. Okay, and those are going to originate where? Uh, anterior okay. process of yeah. your cuboid. I mean, sorry, your calcan calcaneus, Good. sorry. 
you start saying the right bone. So the calcaneus, you're going to get it off the floor, the sinus tarsi, or the dorsal aspect of your calcaneus. And where is that going to insert? Uh, so the hallucis is going to insert on the base of the proximal phalanx of the hallux on the medial side. The What about the lesser digits? This becomes a little tricky. So for that one, it's going to insert like on the lateral aspect of the EDL tendons. So it actually inserts on one of the bones. Which bone would it be? Would it be on the, like the bases of the proximal phalanxes? Yeah, good. They all come from lateral because that's where the muscle is. They insert on the lateral side. And sometimes we have a fifth here. So where would the extensor digitorum longus tendons insert? At the uh, distal phalanxes. Well, both the, you said digitorum longus or hallucis longus? We're going down the line here. You know okay, where so extensor, extensor hallucis longus is obvious, right? Yes. But what I know about... EDL goes to the base of the, the intermediate and the distal phalanx. Good. So when you have, I'll just use another color here. When you have the longest for your lesser digits coming out, this will actually insert and split and come distally here, just like you said. And this will form a little bit of a split, not as the longest pulls through on planar aspect, but it kind of forms its own trifurcation up here. There was a very older procedure for hammer toes where they called it a trifurcation lock, and they prevented the two slips coming down from going on the medial lateral side of it, and they just tied them all together, so they ran on top and kind of pushed the proximal phalanx down, but we don't really do that anymore. Okay. It's important to know that it, this one goes to all, to, to both of them. Okay, and then if we come back to more proximal, is there anything else that's inserting out this way, dorsally? Sometimes, can't you have that um, anomaly muscle, like the capsular, accessor hallucis capsularis tendon? Sure, and that can come off of which two muscles? Uh, I know that can come off the EHL, and yeah. um, is it sometimes like, actually, I don't know the other muscle. I just know it sometimes off the EHL. What else? Yeah, you're correct. It could be off the EHL. What else? What's inserting over here? Oh, your uh, tibant. Right. So if you have this coming up, sometimes there's a little part of it that comes off the tibant. Okay. This becomes important when we're doing dissection because what can it be mistaken as for a bunion surgery? The medial dorsal cutaneous nerve. Okay, good. So it's not a nerve. That's important to remember. People will try to trick you that when you eventually get out of the next internships. Okay, so you got the tibialis anterior. What procedure do you think we have to dissect that off? And you might get asked about um, when you're in surgery. Would it be a, a lapidus? Good. So if we're going to put plates or screws here, we always have to dissect that off. So anytime you're thinking of you're observing in surgery, that is a pretty standard question of what tendons there. And then what tendons going to insert here? Uh, to be honest, post here. Good. And that also inserts where? <clears throat> it has a couple. I know that's, uh, like, bases of, like, uh, two through five meds, some of the cuneiforms plantarly as well. It's pretty much, yeah, everywhere except for the first met base. Mm -hmm. So if you're just peeling off part of the tibialis posterior to do, like, a, a resection of an ostibial externum, you may not need an anchor. You may need an anchor depending on how much you remove because it attaches everywhere else. And then what's going to insert over here in the square lateral foot? So you have your pronius brevis. Um, you can also have your uh, uh, tertius as well that can insert not on the styloid, but on the base. And then you okay. have that uh, lateral slip of the plantar fascia that can go there as well. Good. All three things that could potentially cause an avulsion fracture there. Good. Let me go to another one here. So you got everything that we talked about. When you look at the drawings here, you can see that the 
extensor digitorum brevis is going to come from our lateral versus the longest is going to come straight down the middle. So if we're looking deeper, you're off the hook now. Anybody else want to step up for some questions? Kind of have a cheat sheet here already. Anybody want to repeat? Or should I start asking Dr. Clarity questions? I can go again if no one wants to. OK. So what we want to do here is we want to talk about some important ligaments and some tendons. Um, we didn't cover a couple of them on, on the plantar foot. In the fourth layer, we skipped over the two tendons. So besides the inner osseae, what are the two tendons in the fourth layer? You just talked about the PT which is inserting all down mm -hmm. here, but which one did we miss? Uh, Pronius longus. Good, and that comes through this tunnel on the, on the cuboid mm -hmm. and goes to first mat base. Right? You can see it coming over here. So if, if we covered all the tendons, then we wanna talk about important ligaments to know. Let me erase. When we're looking at the foot, some important ligaments. What ligament would this be? Uh, deep transverse metatarsal ligament. Good. What about this one? Uh, your Miss Frank ligament. Okay. What about this one? So it's bigger. I'm drawing it bigger than it probably really is. Uh, is that the short short plantar? Or short calconio cuboid ligament? Uh, actually, I'm drawing on the dorsal aspect of the foot. Oh. What um, be, yeah, but, yeah. Is that the bifurcate ligament? Good. So it's going to come off the anterior superior across the calcaneus, and that can actually fracture a little piece off. And then what would be plantar that would come from right around here to here? Is that the spring spring ligament? Good. So if you're looking at the spring ligament, where does it actually originate? Uh, out the like the sustentaculum tailor, like the anterior portion of it. Yeah, it's going to come off your sustentaculum, good. Whereas the bifurcate's going to come after off of your anterior superior process. Other ligaments that may be important, if we're looking on the lateral view here. What am I drawing out? The uh, the bone, but we'll talk about the ligaments in a second. Is that the uh, the the distal portion of the fibula? Oh, that's the fibula down there. So what's the red one? Would that be the uh, medial malleolus? Good. And this shows you, if we look in two lines here, which will come into play later on, the anterior colliculus actually hangs more inferior than the posterior colliculus. Okay. But what, what ligaments are going to come off of this, off the medial male? So you have your, like your deltoid complex, which, you know, there's like five or some people might say six ligaments coming off of that. Okay. Good. And then, are there any other important things? So, what's down here? What, what do we call this? Oh, uh, your plantar fascia or plantar aponeurosis. Okay. When we see, I don't know if you can see this little radio opaque line right there. Do you have any idea what this is? Uh, is that compared to this? Would that be like the lanner, uh, lateral plantar yep. tubercle? You're correct. So the medial, the medial tubercle is where we oftentimes see that large spur. The lateral tubercle, we don't really see much. It's a little bit more 
superior. That's why we always release medially because we don't want to destabilize laterally and that's where all the extra stress is. Okay. We're going to do some more drawings here. I first want to see Dr. Clara, do you have anything to add yet? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, is there okay. anybody else waiting to come in? I just thought. Oh yeah, let me check. Looks like we're good. Okay. Dr. Zante, hey, Dr. I have something to say. This is Deanna. Yes, hello. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to say, I think the chat is only open to like the first few people that come in because I don't have access to the chat. So if anybody's saying anything really? in it, I can't see it. Yeah. It's, it's not being point. utilized a lot today, but I wonder why it's not. I don't know, but the last time I had access to it, but yeah, I can't see anything right now. Okay, I'll talk to I. Yeah, the same goes with me too. Yeah. There's Peter. nothing really in the chat today, so don't worry about today. But I will work on IT and figuring out why not everybody can view it. Okay. Um, because we'll want that more for Friday. Yeah. Okay. Just want to let you know. Thank you for letting me know. You're not missing anything today, really. OK. Thanks. Now that you're talking, Dr. do you want to go? Yeah. Uh, I, I had a question about the planter layer stuff that we were talking about. Um, okay. So for the third layer, I've seen in, I can't remember which manual it was, but it talks about the flexor digiti minimi taking part part of its origin off of the peroneus longus tendon. Okay. And then the FHB taking part of its origin off of the um, posterior tip. So I wanted to know if it made it seem like those tendons being peroneus longus and posterior tip were considered to be in the third layer or if they're actually in the fourth. I guess that, that's my question is which layer would they be considered in? They are, it's a good question because it kind of, they start on the bone, but any of these have to start on the bone. Um, it's important to realize that if you're dissecting from the plantar surface down to the metatarsals, you will mm -hmm. encounter these muscles before you get to that fourth layer, which is going to be deep to that. So right. think of more of the muscle belly rather than just the origin itself. Okay. So then um, fourth then, right? Third. It's third because oh. that's where the okay. below it is going to be the fourth layer of the inner osseae, muscle belly wise. Right, right. Okay, cool. All right, thank you. Sure. So a couple things. Anybody want to do lateral foot here? Talk about a couple tendons. We've got a couple more to go through, and then we have some questions. So that's just what we're looking at. So lateral view, anybody want to shout out? There's a couple tendons that we look at. There's going to be one tendon. Anatomically, it's going to run down here. Another one that's going to run adjacent to the sustentaculum, and then okay. one that really hugs your malleolus. I can, I can okay. do it. So, um, okay, which one is going to be inferior to the sustentaculum? That's uh, flexor lucis longus. Okay, and what's going to be adjacent to the sustentaculum? Um, would that be flexor digitorum longus? Correct, and what's going to be right up against the malleoli, medial mal? Uh, tibialis posterior. Good. And then let me erase this. To go over a couple other things on the lateral, you want to make sure that you can outline the metatarsal cortex. So there's right. one, here's two. Sometimes two can be popped up if we have a Liz Frank injury. But it's mm -hmm. really important to identify joints here. So which joint is that one? That would be our Liz Franks. Wait, wait, hold on. Is that too if low? We're talking about, if we're talking about tarsal metatarsal joint. Tarsal, yeah, tarsal metatarsal joint. So Ooh. this would be... Is this show parts? Well, as far as which 
Is this first, second, third, fourth? Which Tarsima Tarsal joint would that be? Oh. Um, I would say that's. I would. Ooh, sorry. Hold on. My screen moved. Okay. I would say. I. So which metatarsal is the shortest? I see, I see the first metatarsal, but I'm Good. probably, so this probably is, wrong. Nope, okay. you're right. So the first is the shortest right there. Yeah. And then, so that's one. And then what's the longest and most recessed back right here? Medioconeiform. Uh, which metatarsal? Oh, the second. Good. And then it's important because when we're looking at aligning the foot, if you have an injury or if we're doing first ray surgery, you want to know that the first is going to be out here. And it's also important because if we look at where the first starts distally and where it starts or where it ends proximally, it's offset. So when you get to an AP view of the foot, like right here, sometimes we have this overlap of the bone because of the oblique obliquity of the joint. And it may look like it's a fracture, but it's really not. Oh, okay. So, so if you're looking truly straight up and down, you'll actually see part of the joint there and part of it there, so it'll look like there's a little fracture there. Okay. Okay. So you just mapped this out, so we'll go through it. So what's underneath the sesentaculum? Flexor lucis longus. And adjacent to it? Flexor digitorum longus. Okay. What and facet would this be? Ooh, middle facet. Good. And then the posterior one, you can see a little bit of right here. Yeah. Good. And here you can see your medial calcaneal tubercle, how it sits more inferior than your lateral one out here. Right. And what did we say this could be? Um, as, are you talking about a muscle? Uh, or a ligament or fascia. Yeah, I would say it's like the medial band of the plantar fascia, maybe. Or you could say it could be... Um, Wait, what so is this it? medial, central, or lateral? It's medial. Is this it? This is the fifth phase. I think it said, oh, wait, 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 sorry. Where, that's lateral, that's lateral, that's lateral. Good, so lateral like, band of plantar fascia. Lateral band of plantar fascia, sorry, sorry, yeah. Good. And this is just showing, if you want to actually see the facets here, here's your middle facet, here's your posterior facet, how they correlate on a CT scan. Okay. Again, if you completely lose your facets, you, what would this be called? An osseous or a fibrous something? If you lose your facets? Yeah. You don't even know, want to know what my answer was going to be until you gave me two options. <laughs> okay, I was going to say a coalition, but... Yeah, correct. I, oh, so you either have an osseous coalition or a fibrous coalition, yeah. If you okay. don't see it at all, then we know it's fully osseous. If you see it where it's oblique and altered, then you have a, a fibrous coalition. So you're right. Okay, cool. All right. Anybody want to get into ankles? So here's a little slide here. Who, okay, we're going to do a little slide and then you're going to go. When we're looking at your syndesmosis, it's important to remember that there's multiple parts to it, as well as when you start to talk about ankle sprains or ankle injuries, you need to be commenting on almost all these ligaments and you can identify them individually. So if we look at, is this, is this an AP or is this a mortise of an ankle? Uh, mortise. Good, because you can see right in the lateral gutter here. So we have your inner osseous membrane, and you'd have your, what two ligaments? What would be anterior and what would be posterior? Um, the anterior and posterior tib fib ligaments. Yep, and because there's some up near the knee, we call it the anterior inferior tib fib ligament and the right. anterior posterior tib fib, or the posterior inferior tib fib ligament. So AITFL or PITFL. And if we're talking about parts of the ankle to describe, it's important once we identify some pathology, what do you call this open space? Medial clear space. Okay, 
or medial gutter. Medial gutter. And what would this be? Lateral gutter. Good. And what do you call this part of the talus? Hmm. Like part of the dome of the talus. Okay. Specifically, that's your medial and your lateral shoulder. Okay. And what do we see down here? Um, the posterior aspect of the tibia. Good. So your posterior malus back there. You may some people may refer to this as the trifurcation where all three bones come together. What part of the fibula is this here? Like the anterior distal portion of it? I don't know. Yeah, there's something specifically about this more radio lucent area. That I don't know. Fibular fossa. Fibular fossa. Where that can become important is when it's more oval like this, we know that's in better alignment, but it sometimes we have a fibular fracture and it rotates, and then you see it kind of open up and circular. Then we know we have a rotated fibula there. Hmm. And if we get into this slide here, what is this more radiolucent space called on the tibia? Means an I. I don't remember. Okay, the incisora. incisora. It's where the if you look on the CT scan here, it's this indented area where the fibula sits in on the tibia. Yep. And it's important to use these two images to correlate. So when we look at image, when we look at line C. Is this? anterior or is this posterior tibia that's on the fibula um from the image it looks like it would be more anterior good so we know that the posterior we know that the fibula sits more posterior so then this has to be anterior because the fibula is kind of tucked behind it and seeing this image up top here of your ct it actually shows nicely how it overhangs mm -hmm. And what do we call this here if we're evaluating an ankle sprain or ankle fracture? We call it tib fib something. Overlap. Good. Any idea what that should be? Oh, um, no. Two millimeters, um, three millimeters, I want to say. I don't remember. Should be greater than that. Okay. Anybody in the chat room want to comment in? While you're answering some others, we'll see. Oh, wow. So what is this called here? between lines A and B. Uh, I'm not sure. Andrew said six millimeters for the tip fib oh, overlap. Correct. Is that correct? Okay, yeah. Go with that. yep, That's correct. Is, and then between A and B is not the overlap, but it's the something space. Clear space? Good. So a tip fib clear space, somebody in the chat room can help you out by putting in the numbers. Okay. And when do these become important? What are we evaluating by looking at the tib fib clear space and the overlap? Um, how far apart those structures are and basically how well the ligaments are holding them together. Good. So this specifically for a syndesmotic injury, because if you rupture your syndesmosis, you're going to have a decreased overlap and an incre increased clear space. Gotcha. It's also important to know that this part overhanging the fibula is more anterior because if you ever have a fracture of this part of the bone here, you know, you need to go anterior to fix it. Does anybody, in the, besides, we'll give some people in the chat room an option, besides, so somebody needs to know the numbers between the, for the tip of clear space, and does anybody else out there know the name if you pull off the anterior lateral aspect of your tibia those are two questions for the chat room um okay we'll give you a break if anybody wants to step up we have like 10 slides of just questions here I took them from an old exam when they used to teach this uh so there's some basic questions but let's see who wants to step up first i'll go okay so first question is the red arrow. Uh, it's a two part question. What part of the fibula is that is the first part? To the neck of the fibula. 
Good. And then what nerve runs right by that? Uh, common perineal. Good. And then the blue arrow is something we kind of just answered, but what soft tissue structure runs where that blue arrow is? Uh, interosseous membrane. Okay. Let's give you one more here. The blue arrow is pointing to which colliculi, and the red arrow is pointing to which colliculi? Uh, the blue is the posterior, red is the anterior. Good. And what ligament comes off of those? Uh, the deltoid. Okay, good. Anybody want to take a couple more questions? I think we only have a few more here. These we'll are just some reviews. All right, this review from what we just talked about. So what is this right here? This anterior posterior tibia. That is um, anterior. Good. And we call that tib fib overlap. Good. And then what's this space called? The uh, medial clear space. Uh, medial clear space will be down here. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Uh, okay. The what are these two bones? Oh, the uh, tib fib clear space. Good. And this more radio opaque line right here, what does that represent? Which part of the tibia, anterior or posterior? Um, anterior. You said this was anterior, which you were correct. Right. Yeah. So this posterior. Is posterior. Good. And this is your incisor in there. Good. Okay. Who wants to take a couple more, or do you want to stay up? I can say if no one's okay. What is this called? What space in here? Uh, medial clear space. Medial this gutter. Me good. And yeah. this is what? Um, lateral clear space. Lateral gutter. And what's up here? The the anterior tibia. This is actually the posterior mal back there. Here's okay. the anterior stops. So these are all, I know we're going over them multiple times here, but when you guys are describing ankle fractures and injuries on externships and interviews, just being able to use the correct terms is really important. All right, who's next? We have just a couple more. I can go. Okay. So the blue arrow is pointing to what part of the talus? What part of the talus? Is it um, the posterior facet? Posterior facet would be right back here. So if you extended the arrow out, you're correct. But what about this anatomic part of the talus right there? Oh, um... Is it the medial talus or lateral talus? Medial. So the medial, which one is triangular shaped and which one's comma shaped? I'm, I'm assuming the lateral is triangle shape and the medial is comma. Good. So this is more your lateral talar process. Lateral. You can actually see this radio opaque line right here where you have the medial border of your, or your medial side of the talus. Okay. And then the red arrow is pointing to what part of the calcaneus that we talked about? Um, is that the lateral tubercle? Good. So two other things here. What is the red arrow pointing to and the blue arrow? The red arrow is pointing to, uh, was it the posterior part of the fibula? Well, the fibula is actually down this way. Oh, no. Um... I need a hint. So it's on the medial male. Here's your tibia, like this. Okay. And what are the two inferior parts of the medial male? Begins with the C. Oh, the colliculus. So would that be the yep. posterior colliculus? Well, think, look, which one's anterior and which one's oh, posterior? Sorry. Anterior colliculus. Okay, good. All right, two more, then you're done here. 
So what is this part of the calcaneus? Um, is that the anterior process? Anterior would be out this, oh, sorry, blue one is yes. Blue is the anterior process. And what's the red arrow? Um, one second, my screen thing is blocking it. Oh, um, is that the, sorry, I can't get my, I don't know how to move my. Oh, it's okay. Um, would that be, oh, is that the medial tubercle of the calcaneus? Good. Good. And what, your last question, what ligament comes off of where the blue arrow is pointing? Of where the blue arrow is pointing. Um, would it be calcaneonavicular ligament? Okay, what do we call that where it goes from the calcaneus to navicular and calcaneus to cuboid? Is that the bifurcate ligament? Good. So when you talk about avulsion fractures from somebody who has an ankle sprain, the bifurcate ligament or even the EDB can pull off that piece of bone right there. So it's okay. important to document that and check that. All right, we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slides left for questions like this. Who wants to go next? We already did this one. No, we did that one already. So we'll cut it down to five slides. We kind of did that one too. So we'll go through four slides. Uh, these are just which bones. All right, who wants three slides? One volunteer for three slides. I won't show what they are yet, or I'll give you the first one. I'll go again. Okay. So this is the easy one. So which two bones are we pointing to? Uh, you're pointing to a talus and a first cuneiform. one. Okay. Which one of these has an actual tendon that inserts on it? Um, first cuneiform. one. Okay, and what tendons can insert on the first kidney form? <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, ant tip anterior. Good. Um, and then on the bottom side, I want to... Uh, we know it goes to the first met base, but depending yeah. on which anatomy book you read, there could be a little bit to the kidney form. What would that one be? Like um, peroneus longus. Okay, good. To go back to that point, if you read, there's a lot of anatomy textbooks out there, and if you even look at some of them that look at a whole bunch of cadavers, there's variations of everything. So I don't think it would really be that big of a deal to argue semantics on if things have a little bit of a slip coming from some other piece of anatomy. It's really more important just to know all your general terms and then or general origins and insertions and surgical dissection. All right, the last two slides. If we're on the red arrow, this, there's two bones that this is pointing to. Which two is this pointing to that overlap? Um, it's pointing to the first cuneiform and then, yeah. I guess, overlapping with part of the third met, like base or... Another or the, which one's going to be more dorsal? It's not the third metatarsal, but. Dorsal. Oh, the um, intermediate kidney form? True, it could be that. I was going for second metatarsal. Second met. Gotcha. So we know, because we know the second is recessed further back to this. Gotcha. And then, Nivicular. which bone is this good? All right, last questions. So what facet is this pointing to? Posterior. Good. And what tendon runs underneath this bone here? The cuboid pulley, um, peroneus longus. Good. And in general, what type of foot is this? Supinative foot type. Okay, good. Okay. So you're, everyone's done. Next week, what we're going to do is go over some MRI anatomy. And then if we keep going further, we'll do some uh, pathologic anatomy from x-rays and MRIs, and then we may do some like flat foot angles, cavus angles, and just keep going over that stuff. Questions on anything? As Don't far as... Dante, I have a yes. question. Uh, since I can't see the chat, did we ever confirm the, uh, the ranges for the tib